Greetings, Minecrafters! Nonsanity here, and welcome to another episode of All the Mods 9 to the Skies. As I said a few moments ago, oh wait, last episode to you, uh, we're going to start with Forcecraft, which I have laid out in these chests here. We need the Force Infuser and a Power Source. So let's put that down. Force Infuser, give it a power. If we open that up, we can see it's got some slots here, slots around there, and a button down here, and the help button up there. It's got its power. How we progress in this mod. All right, everything in this chest you can just craft. All this stuff you can just craft. And the first thing you're going to craft is a force rod. You can make it with a stick, in which case it's empty, but I put it in my a hot bar, it will start recovering durability. If I put it in my white bag of fast repair, it'll pop right up. Or you can do it with a force stick. Uh, force sticks require force planks, force logs. So I think the first thing we want to do is make a whole bunch of those. And here's a fast way to do it. Uh, I was getting four saplings from sifting, I think it was. I'll put dirt in my off hand and with my builder's wand make some dirt like that, just all on the edge here. I'm going to swap that out for saplings And then I'm just going to go along <laughs> the line here, and my growth ability will make these all grow big and strong pretty quickly. Let's get these down here. I guess I have to be higher. There we go. All right, that's good enough. And I'm just gonna ultramine all this wood up. Make sure I don't miss any logs along the way so that everything despawns. this super fast way to get all <laughs> the wood I'm going to need for this mod in one fell swoop. Not this one. Those don't grow probably because they're right next to that. And now I will get rid of the dirt. Because that's enough. So I've got a whole inventory full of logs. <laughs> and that will repair, but you know, like I said, if I drop one of my, uh, make a basic rod and drop it in here and this, this will heal it up pretty quickly as it's doing with my trusty diamond Paxel that's been with me for so long. All right, all healed. Anyway, and then craft that with a book and you get this upgrade tome. And when you place this in here, even before you place it in there, if you hover over it, it says it's tier zero, zero of two, force point zero, next tier is a 96. You get force points for applying infusions. The up, the, the tiering system for this mod, I'm not going to say it sucks. I'm just going to say it's boring. Basically, you have to, you get points for every time you use this thing. I still have some saplings in my hand. So every time you do craft something in here, you get some, some of these force points. And you have to get 96 force points 
to take it up to the next tier. So you use it and it gets, and it increases. So, all right, that's understandable. But then it also has this zero of two. Uh, if we click the help button, we can see that uh, for tier zero infusions, there are two things you can do. Put a claw of a bat on like a sword or a bow or armor, or put a force nugget on a sword. It's the only two things you can do with it. You have to do both in order to satisfy going from tier zero to tier one. So not only do you have to do a bunch of things, you have to do one of each thing. And this, this is true for every single level. Uh, we do need bat claws. So what I'm going to do is get some... Uh, let's just get some more dirt. Sure, why not? It worked before. And my infinity wand. And I'm going to grab a mob imprisonment tool. We're going to go over to our stadium. But instead of being up here where everybody can see what we're going to do, we're going to come down here. Underneath. And we're just going to wand out a platform. And then we're going to back up. And look, we got bats. All right. <laughs> I just need to grab one of them. Oh, this one. Gotcha. And now we can get rid of all this dirt. So we really don't want bats <laughs> down here all the time. All right. So we got one bat in an imprisonment. Let's run over to the gas dome. And in here, I've taken out the gassed imprisonment, and I'm going to put the bat in there. Let's get rid of all that, and the wand, and instead get out my sword. Throw the switch. Oh, and actually, let's not do the sword, because these guys are flying. Instead of chasing them around, let's grab the Archangel's Smite. It's like shooting bats in a box. It's like fish in a barrel, but a little bit more cubic and high-pitched. Some friends were watching a movie. It was Fern Gully, which has Robin Williams playing a bat with an antenna stuck in his head. I hope he isn't one of these. But if so, gravity works. All right, that's more than enough bats. Let's just get rid of what's left in here. Thankfully, these I don't have to really target too much because these things do seek out. As long as you aim roughly towards something, you're going to hit it. That's it. All right, they're all gone. I got 20 of those claws and some of the other bat wings from other mods. That's going to be more than enough. We really only need one. So we're good. So we come over here, and I already had one in there, so I throw that one away. So we need some of these force gems. Those go in this slot and get liquefied. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these force swords, which is just a force stick and some ingots, pop that in with a claw, and then hit this button. It makes some noises, and you get a sharpness one force sword. Sharpness one force sword. Since I've already uh, got a chest that shows all the outputs, I'll just make this chest to trash things into. So now if we look, we've got, how did I get that many swords? Should have only had three swords. Anyway, uh, if we look at the book, it says one of two, and we've gotten 25 points. We need 71 more. 
So we're going to put a nugget on a sword. And now we're two of two, but we still need to get more points. We need to do this two more times. Click the button. See, it's at 75. Need 21 more. We should be... Yes, we're at tier one now. I'm just going to throw all these away. And I don't know where these came from. So at tier one, we get new things we can do. Tier one infusions. Heat, lumberjack, and speed. Heat is made by smelting a piece of the force wood. And that can go on any tools or armor. Lumberjack is a log on an axe. Speed is sugar on a tool or a bow or something. So I've got all these. And that's all this process is, is just making all these things, clicking the button. You can't automate it. Uh, I got lots of problems when I tried. So this should be all three of three, but it's still not quite enough points. We've got to do one more. There seems to be a problem. Uh, let's see where it should be at tier two. Yes. Seems to be a problem when you take the book out. It breaks the uh, thing. All right, this is a little confusing because not all of these, not all of these are the end products. Some of them are intermediate problem uh, products, and the first one is the experience core. So to do that, you need to make an experience book, which I think is just crafting. And it no, I, I guess it is in here. Book and that, and we're at zero of nine with four points. We do this, and that's one of the things we need to do. Experience Tome, uh, you want to have it in your inventory. It's got zero experience in it right now, and it can hold two billion. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's just get the Archangel again. Uh, it doesn't kill them very quickly. I'm going to use my sword. And as you kill them, the experience Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought it was something that picked up the experience, but no, you just have to right-click it in your inventory, and it looks like it's sucking up my experience and going in there. Alright, so how much has it got? Oh, it's got 7,000. Alright, that's plenty. <laughs> For every 100 experience it has in it, when you use it with a force rod, and I've got one here, you get upgrade cores. So because I've got 7,000, I can get 70 upgrade cores out of it. Now it's got 31 experience, less than 100. So that is how you get these cores, and that is the only thing you need that for. So I'm going to put these in here because they will be needed for some of these other... Actually, we're going to use three of them right now. Or is it four? Oh, I got four. All right, so a bottle of enchanting you know about Snow Cookie... Just take a snowball and craft it. You get a snow cookie. Uh, flint, you understand. Sugar, you understand. So, all right, here we go. Toss that in with that. We have an experience core. Freezing core. Now I'm just going to take this out, put it back in. Does that break it? No, it didn't break it. I think it's only when you pipe it out. The mod needs to make its output the only thing that can be piped out. All right, so five of nines. So we've got nine different things in this tier. We only have to make them all once, at least. Those are all the cores. So you can see all the cores in the experience tome. So yeah, this is sort of the layout of 
this shows you the inputs and this shows you the outputs. So I'm getting one sharpness, three knockback, one uh, efficiency, I guess it is, uh, lumberjack, and then two fire aspects. I have to make the experience tome, each of these cores. I need to make a force bow, four shears. Well, I need to make the freezing bow, the rainbow shears, looting sword, and an upgraded force pack. For the fortune on the sword, so I guess I do need one of these. I'm going to make this fortune cookie, which is a cookie and a piece of paper, and then you got to eat it. And now I've got the fortune. No, not the pit, it burns. That's my fortune. That goes on a sword, and you get looting one. Uh, you can craft this up grade and the force pack put those together and you get a larger goes from eight slots to 16 toss that away uh, any uh, blue dye with force shears I don't know if it's just blue dye but that's what the recipe seems to say you get rainbow shears that will give you a random color of wool when you shear a sheep and if you take a bow with a snow cookie you get freezing bow. And now we should be at tier three, of which there are four items. And I think this is where the other sword came from. Sword with an arrow gets you bleeding one. Uh, pickaxe with a cobweb, which you can craft gets you Silk Touch Pickaxe, and then you can upgrade the previous pack to have even more slots. But that one, that one didn't, oh, that's right. That one doesn't actually count as one of the things you have to do. You don't have to do that a second time. Instead, you have to do some potioning. So let's pop this down, load it up with some water bottles, put in another wart. I'm going to speed it up, put in a golden carrot, and a fermented spider eye, and we get potions of invisibility. Put those on a piece of armor. That will be number four, camo boots, an extra buff potions. We are now at tier four, and that is what we needed to do. With that, oh, I only need 20. We can, oh, golden power source and an upgrade core will make heat core. And that is what we need in here. Right there. Do that 20 times, and we've got this stack finished. Another reason why you can't automate this is you have to manually click this button in the GUI. And with the beeping of the microwave and a little bit of an edit, we've got 20 heat cores and Forcecraft is complete. So this is done, 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 and this is done. We just have two components of the star left with four pieces. Uh, this one is create, this one is occultism, and these two are draconic evolution. And it also includes the guardian, chaos guardian, or replacement. So since there's two of those, uh, and that way we can get closer to the chaotic elements, let's start with Draconic Evolution. And for that, I have the Drac Pack. Here is the room I made. I've got some empty server 
uh, cabinets ready for the injectors and the core goes in the middle. And it's all over here. I have 12 uh, cores that were, or 12 injectors that we're going to use. One that's going to be used for crafting the core, power for it. We're going to use Ender IO again. We need a clock. And then for automation, I'm going to use Steve's Factory Manager AE2 and a couple of barrels. And three to be precise, because we're going to use this one as well. I also have five of the Draconic Bs here that we will eventually upgrade using this system that we're about to build. All right, injectors first. They are placed facing you, so stand next to where the core is going to go so they will face the core. And I think 12 is as many as we will ever need. So this is the last one that's for crafting. The core goes in the middle, but first I'm going to place some conduits down here. Place it on the conduits. And above, I'm going to place this clock. Now the clock, as you right click, it goes up by one. You can crouch click to make it go up by 10. And at 100, it wraps around to five. And so we'll just keep it at five. Four, eh, four times a second. I don't know that there's a, I think these are ticks. Twice a, twice a second is good enough. All right, now these things have two modes. They have the stack mode, which you can see as I'm looking at it, it's written over there in the right, just above what I'm holding. Uh, if I place a stack of items in it, so I have 26 conduits, I right click, all 26 are sitting there. We do not want that. So we're gonna crouch right click with an empty hand. Now it says single item mode. So I take the 26 conduits, click, and I have 25. So only one was placed on there. So that's what we want. Now I'm going to give each pair a flux point so that they are future proofed as far as power goes. They will, can have all the power that they want to make them run as quick as possible. And we're going to start automating them. So I want to be able to just like request stuff from the AE system. So let's put these all up. Now they do need they do need to be switched to insert. I'm going to leave them set to green because uh, that's the default and that's fine. This is the color we'll want the most. I'm using the conduits because of their color ability. It's like having multiple different separate pipe networks, but all running through the same pipe just by giving each one a different color, which you've seen in the other episodes. Even last one was doing a little bit of this. I'm going to take my pants off again so I can crouch while flying. There we go. All right, so I've already got a ring down here with a bit of cable. Now I'm going to hook up a pattern provider right there. And this one is going to be an insert on red. Red is going to be our final output color. And now if I click this one on the fusion, it's going to extract on red. So that's going to get always the output and it's going to take stuff on pink. So pink goes into the fusion and red comes out, goes back in the system. Yep, set to lock never. Or no, we want to lock crafting until the result and block. So it won't put anything else out into this chest until the chest is empty. So it'll only put one batch in. And I won't start the next batch until it gets the results of the first one. So when something comes in on the red channel. This one, it's not going to be hooked up at all. So when we make a pattern, it's going to dump everything in this chest. 
But I need one item, the first one, to go to the fusion core in the center. And that's where uh, Factory Manager comes in, because it can do this quite easily. Toss a disk in, and we're going to place down these two like that, connect it up. We'll make this one the core, so it's going to extract on pink, always. So that'll go, that's the first item in this slot. And this one will be extracting on green always. So that goes to all the others. And that one can get the speed upgrade just so it's a little, as fast as possible. So let's write our script. We want to input anything from source, but we only want slots zero. I know that's just one slot, so it should be slot without the S, but the keyword is S. It's got to have that to turn orange. We're going to output whatever that is to destination A. And then we're going to forget all that. And do a new input of star from source, all the other slots, and output whatever it finds to destination B. And that's it. Very simple script. We're mainly just using it for that slot determination. So when we make the pattern, let's make our first pattern right here. We're going to take our draconium fusion injector and upgrade it to a wyvern fusion injector. So all these things we just placed, we need to upgrade them. Using all of these, the wyvern cores, draconium core with some nether stars and draconium and these we saw already. Draconium block. When we make this into a recipe, the center item in the recipe is in the first slot. And that's where it should be. And that will place it here. And everything else will be to the right of it. All right, that's running. It's happy. But it won't work because we need to apply the labels. So let's crouch, right-click to pull the labels. Click the air. Oh, got some old ones in here. Prone. I hope they're still going to be there. Anyway, source there, destination A here, destination B there. And then right click the manager to put the labels back in. All right, that's it. Put that away. Hop upstairs. Toss this uh, extra injector into the system and say, make one upgrade. So let's place the, the one in there. The other slots are filling in. Oh, I forgot. I said to uh, set these all to single, but I did not do that. Aha. These are all set to stack mode, except for the first one. So as you can see, it uh, stacked them all, all the ones that were the same. So we'll just manually drop them all back in there. Now, see the diamonds getting spread out. Yeah. And we should see sparks. There it goes. little particles around them. And don't worry, the, the sparks aren't dangerous. <laughs> Alright, now it's in phase two, where it's actually doing the craft. You can right-click this block and see it's now crafting. The first phase was just powering up. And when it's done, it 
created it. It went out back into the AE system, and there it is. So we can go over here and replace one of these. Now you still have to crouch, right click to put it in the single item and switch this to insert. It's going to forget those each time as you replace. Now we can't just put this back in because we've had it out and we've used it. It says content saved. So if I toss that in and say, hey, make me a new one, it says missing. We don't have any of those. Well, we do. It just isn't recognizing it. So let's take this pattern out. Take a look at it here. It is a processing pattern. Yeah, well, the, the crafting patterns have the uh, substitutions, but the processing patterns doesn't seem to have that. But if we take the one we've got here and click it in that slot, now that one says content saved. Encode it back to the pattern and toss it in. That may be what we have to do. Uh, but now we can make another one. We can actually do a few. We don't actually have to have an extra one to start with because as you can, did I not? That's single item mode. It's one diamond. Did I screw up that pattern in some way? Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. It's only one of each now. Oh, because I switched to crafting and back. All right, so do that. Of course, now it's back to the blank. We'll grab this one. Well, actually, I could have just grabbed the one that's in here. I'm going to empty all these. So these are both content saved, yeah. So content saved, write that. Toss these two into the system. Toss the pattern back, cycle through this so it's unlocked. Clear the craft. Start a new one. We've got two in here now and they're stacked. So they're the same. Make two. Because we're not using all of them for this craft, we can go ahead and grab a few extras down. Looks like I can take these two. Toss them in. So you could have made, gotten away with just making... Uh, how many does this take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you just make eight of them. That would be all you need to start. But eventually you'll need about a dozen. All right, so I'm going to finish upgrading all of these, and I'll be right back. All right, they are all upgraded to Wyvern level. Now we can add a few more recipes. And the first one is going to be using some of these dragon hearts. I only have six. I had more, but then, like I said, I get ahead. But let's say we just have six. Uh, we need to use one to make Awakened Draconium, which is a lot of these Draconium cores and a heart. Four Draconium blocks gets you four Awakened Draconium blocks. So at least it's a bulk crafting. Not so bad in that. So let's go ahead and order up just one batch. So one thing about the uh, conduits, they're a little slow grabbing. It's only like once a second. Since we're only grabbing one item, or we're only pushing one item into these things, it's only one item per second. It's very slow, even with the upgrade. 
All right, awakened, complete. And there we go. All right, and this is what we need. Because we can turn some of it into ingots and then use the ingots, bunch of recipes, but this is what we want. Oh, not that one. Ah, of course, the last one. Our draconium bees to awaken bees uses another heart. Uh, draconic cores, ah, which also need to be a pattern. So let's let's make these patterns here. Oh, go to the pattern tab. So using the heart. I'm going to make the Draconic Core, which doesn't require the heart, but we do need to do it first. And then we can use those, a heart, and everything else we've already got to make the bee. And we're going to go ahead and toss these into the system so they're available. All right, so we'll put that in and that in. And since it knows how to do both of them, we should just be able to ask for the B. Awaken Draconian B. Oh, we need to convert a few more. Let's just do five. Well, actually, I already had some in. I had some in my inventory, not in the system. All right, one B, please. So it's going to have to do three crafts to make this B. But once it's done that, we can put the B into our beehive and make all the awakened draconium we'd want without having to use any more dragon hearts. And we can use the last of the dragon hearts to make more bees. Oh, we've got a problem. I think this needs a higher tier. Yeah, this one requires a higher tier. Forgot about that. Uh, the Awakened B requires a draconic. Okay. So we can't do it quite yet. We got to go up one more level from wyvern to draconic, which each one requires a block of draconium. So we're going to have to make more blocks of draconium, which means using more of the hearts. Six hearts might not be enough. I may have to go kill another dragon or two. So tossed all that stuff in there. Put my pants back on. Not that you can see them. They're invisible armor pants. So we're going to need... Well, it knows how to make them. So, I should just have to uh, program that recipe in. So let's do that. Injector, draconic, draconic. Toss that in. Crafting is locked because we canceled that craft. Take the B out. We'll get to you soon, son. All right. Craft one of these, because I still have that extra one injector in the system. Well, I should look to see how many of these are go unused. One, two, three, four, five. So five of them are unused. So I'll grab those. Don't break, even though they're empty, they're still being used. I think this is the one that was empty, but I'll wait till it's finished. Oh, that wasn't the finished, that wasn't the empty one. Oh, it's making a second one. Is this the empty one? Yeah, it has no power in it. All right. Well, now they're all done, but. We'll toss those in. 
and say make five more. Whoop. Ah, it, it doesn't see. Again, these have the contents saved to them. So let's go and edit that recipe. And click that content saved, export, and it has the right numbers of everything still because I didn't change modes on it. So I'll go ahead and stick this one in. Single item mode, insert. Now we can ask for five more. All right, so let me finish these and I'll be back when they are done. Okay, they are all upgraded. And I still have two Dragon Hearts left, two Awakened Draconium blocks left. Let's see if I can do a B now. Oh, I'm one short. Okay. Looks good. It looks like we'll have one block left, which is good because we need that to actually use the bee. And as for hearts, we'll have one left. We can make one more bee after we get use the first bee to make more draconium. To get more bees, I will need to make, I need to go kill more dragons. So, whoop. Let's head to the bee room, the hive. Uh, I would have another catcher in here for when I was taking these crystalline bees, uh, popping them out and hitting them with a prosperity shard block like that. Then they get captured by the catcher. Like so, which has a whole lot of cages available to it. And then those I toss in here and we're squishing to get the prosperity gene samples to make prosperity eggs that I could turn into awakened supremium bees. I've got two hives of those now which have the full set of upgrades and uh, some down there. So now we can put this in here, but I also want to improve it. So let's pop it out. And it got caught. And let's look at its stats. Yeah, it could be improved. Let's give it strong endurance, productivity high, works all the time. That's good enough. Combine those in here. Speed it up because we're on camera. There we go. This one's got all the upgrades in it. Toss the B in and this awaken block goes down in the feeding slab. So now I should be able to do that. Yep, look at all this awakened combs going through here. Let's see how much one batch of 256 time with just one B, but all these upgrades. And you can improve the B a little bit higher. Productivity here is high, but there's one tier above that. And there is a trick to getting that. Productive bees. What you do, oh, productive. Oh, there it is. Make the bee nest helmet. So you're gonna have to grow a tree next to some flowers to get a regular bee nest. So you can't craft it. Attach that to a helmet and then get attacked by something. 
the bees will come out. They're very, very tiny bees. But if you catch them, probably easiest to have one of these things nearby. Like I can bring in, do I want to, let's just go ahead and do it. Just so I can, I haven't done it myself. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's get some dirt. Because it will be good to have this for the chaos bees because they're rather slow. Let's get some rose bushes, because I got a lot of those. And a sapling. Actually, those bushes might be too tall. No beehive. Hey, there it is. I switched to grass, I tried dandelions. None of those made, probably made any difference. Don't need you bee, but I will take with silk touch your bee nest. All right. Get rid of all that. Now, I have a diamond helmet that's plain. I do not. It's all right. Now I do. There we go. And I'm pretty sure I have a llama. Got lots of those. Let's go back into here just to keep everything contained. So bring out the llama. Put on the hat. I just, I just killed the llama. Hi everyone, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Oop. Ah, I think we're getting bees now, finally. Ah, we have them, we got four kamikaze, five. All right, this is working, this is working. All right, I had to take off my blindness and weakness so that he could actually punch me. It's not doing any damage, but hitting me is enough. Sometimes the bees actually sting him, because he's taken three hearts of damage. Ah, there's one of them. See him? Ah, he got killed. So as soon as the catcher... Let's uh, speed the catcher up. So now it should catch them the moment they come out. Oh yeah, look at all those. We want to get a lot of them so uh, we can melt them down and get their uh, genes. Because the nice thing about those guys is you see their productivity is very high. So this is a really good thing to do here. All right, he finally got killed by enough of the bees. So we lost him, but that worked. Let me put my uh, abilities back on. And put these away. Put my armor back on. I'm just going to stick that in here and turn that off. So. How do we do? We got five of the kamikaze genes. And let's see. Productivity, very high. So we got eight of those. Excellent. All right, now we should have... Where did I put the B? Oh yes, he's in here. <laughs> Let's get him out. Put him in a cage. Huh, 
Where'd he go? Oh, here he is. Away can be. So we're going to take him and we're going to give him that trait. So we'll take the very high. And we will apply it to him. Right now he's productivity high. And now he is very high. Excellent. Pop him back, pop him back in. I don't think we got 10,000 awakened draconium. For some reason this isn't piping out like it's supposed to. Ah, no, it's, ah yeah, I turned it off. I had turned it off when I was doing some other testing earlier, so that probably already had some in it. So let me turn it back on again and let it flush out all that's in there. I think I'll grab the bees. Anyway, we now have a very high productivity awakened bee. He's making us awakened draconium. So now, the last level of injector is chaotic. And that needs shards. And to get shards, we get these little tiny shards from the combs of the Chaos Bee. And the made of way to make the Chaos Bee needs one small, two of these, which and each of those takes five large. So that's ten large, one small. And then it needs a full shard as the pollination target. So one full shard, so three full shards will let us make a, uh, a chaos bee. So since we're doing the bees and we know we're gonna do something to get the chaos shards later, let's do the spawning in right now. So let us go into cheat mode. One, two, three large shards. And again, we will do an episode where we do some other things, and I still want your comments as to what I should do, what extra thing I should do. Right now we're leaning towards alchemistry. Uh, some other people have mentioned an interest in... Uh, Was it Silent Gear? No. Yeah, one, one person said Silent Gear, another person said uh, the... What's the mod called? It's the one that modifies the spawners. Apotheosis. Because I think it has... It's, yeah, it has all these gems and so forth. And obviously the one you want to get is the God Forged, uh, which I think Enderman will drop. But I'd, I'd have to, I'd, I really don't know the mod. I'd have to go and look it all up and, and, and see how it all works. Uh, so it's probably not a best to, to choose a mod that I don't know, then I have to go and figure it out. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we got some shards here, so let's let's do what we're going to do with them here. So we need the small, we need the large, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this in the slab so it's there. So we're going to take this bee back out again, because I actually have some other awakened bees previously baked 
So we'll actually put one of them in there. Actually, we'll, we'll put all but one in there. This one will be our uh, chaotic one. So we only have enough shards for one at the moment. Oh, that's right. To make the awakened be, I shouldn't have. Well, we just need to make another awakened bee. Be awakened. Go ahead and craft it. I need the awakened. All right, so. We did make a whole bunch, and I had a bunch. There we go. Plenty of awakened. Now do, no, not that B. B. Yeah, that's the B we want, actually. Awakened Draconium B, go. And now we need to go and set up the recipes for all the chaos stuff, because we need to upgrade. Oh, wrong, wrong box. All right, so we're going into new territory here. I have not done this because I was waiting for you guys to do the shards. So we're going to have to have this recipe. So using the shards, we want to make that core. There we go. Let's put all the shards in the system. And we also want to, using the small shard, make the B, which requires the next tier up of injector, of course. But these will be used for that. So let's make that recipe too. So the injectors, top tier. We do need these, right? I think so. Oh, if so, we need a lot more of the shards. Let me check to see. Chaos, B spawn egg. Chaotic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wow. Wow. And they take four shards each. <laughs> For the large. So in order to make the one B, we would have to kill a whole bunch of the Chaos Guardians. Because I think you only get like five... Well, let's see how, how far we can get with just, if we had five, I got three, let's get two more. Oh, that's the large, I want the full shards, okay. So that's five of those if we had gotten them. Yeah, see that'll only do four more We got the 17 here. I guess if it gave us, do they, can the Chaos get Dragon give you a six? Otherwise we'd have to kill it at least twice. So this is how many we need to upgrade all the injectors. But we need 10 large to make the B. So let's get one more of these things. Break it down. And that's enough. So if we got six, we can do this. All right. So did I make the injector? I did not make the injector yet. Uh, injector pattern. So presumably we have killed the the guardian 
twice. One, either once and got six shards, or twice to get more than that. Let's give it a try. And you've seen this crafting, so I will be swapping these out. I will bring you back when they are all crafted. All right, I made eight of the chaotic injectors. So I should be able to make a B. Seems to think I can. Down to two shards, two large and eight small. And okay, so it's going to be crafting some other elements first. Oh, and hopefully none of those require, yeah, they do, they require additional injectors. But you can mix lower ones with the high ones. All right, so I'll put three of them down, make them single stack. It's one blank spot, but I think this should be enough for all the intermediate. And then if it gets to the B and it puts something in those slots, I can move it to the correct ones. Unless it knows to be smart enough about that. We'll see. Okay, so it's the core that it's having troubles with. Let's move the core is just one. And then, oh, I see. All right, so that's a problem with my automation. See if you can see the problem. And the key thing is that there's five of these in here instead of just one. The rest are all supposed to be... Whoop, that's in stack mode. Should not be in stack mode. I didn't set that one up. That one, single item mode, okay. And there. Uh, is this going to take... Well, it's only a Draconic tier, so I can put down another Draconic one. Hook it up. Shard. Is that happy now? Yep, okay. Yeah, because the centerpiece shares the same item with the others, all those went into the first slot of the barrel down there. And that caused them all to go in the center. All right, so I know that now. So it's going to do another one of those, and I'll have to manually adjust it. But we can do that. All right, I'll be back when it is at the B. Oh, here comes the B. So this one's going to require the top tier injectors. So everything that got put into a lower tier, I have to move by hand right now. There we go. I saw sparks. It's working. We get the chaotic bee. All right, we got it. Let's head over to the hive. So get out the chaotic bee. We need to res it up and put it into a bee cage. Let's check its stats. Oh yeah, it needs it needs some uh, nice traits here. Let's do that. There's our Chaos B. He's now much better. We'll stick him in here. Though we need to get the productivity. Oh, let's see, it's 
craft it over here. Make two of those and one of these. Toss that away for now. There's one. There's two. Okay. So this should be empty. Let's go ahead and do what I did before and turn that off. And let's give this guy one dose of 256 and see how many tiny chaos shards we get. <laughs> to make another B, we just need the 10 large and one small. That's a lot of tinies because yeah, that's just three or yeah, three small. It's, sounds like it's done. <laughs> yeah, it's not even enough for one large. So whoop. I've got 204 hours stored in my bottle. This seems like a good use of it. As I get more chaos shards. Very close to having one large. We're a tenth of the way there. Which means I gotta do the 256 20 times. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Great. And that's not the beginning of an episode. It's the end of an episode. It's just that it's been five days since I last recorded. I came down with a cold. Uh, so I did a little bit in here. I made time torches. This is something you make with force craft. We stopped at tier four in the uh, force craft infuser. If you keep going up to six, you can take a force torch and a clock and make a time torch. And a force torch is just a stick and a smelted force log. And these time torches will speed up the four blocks around them. So I've got them around all of the... Uh, I don't know if it matters top and bottom, if it works for both, or if it's just whichever one is the advanced hive block. The expansion blocks, the ones on the expansion box may not make any difference, but uh, I could, so I did. They are a little bit annoying to make because you have to put the, put the torch in, put in one clock, not shift, click a stack, because it'll put a whole bunch in. One clock, doesn't matter which slot. Hit the button, wait, ding, take out the result. Put it in a new torch, a new clock, hit the button, wait, ding. Very annoying. On your way to tier six, uh, you may hit a stumbling block. I know I did. And that's a tier five when you have to put a gas tier on a force rod. Uh, if you put these two in there and the button doesn't light up and let you push it, take two force rods and craft them together. Well, not that one, that one's got something on it here. So if I put these two in here and you can see they're both force rod durability 75, I get a new force rod durability 75. These won't work for the infusion, this one will. So it must be something in the MBT but I didn't investigate further. That's, that's the solution to get past it. And you can slap these time torches down and it runs very fast. And I did that just before I stopped for a bit because I was sick. And when I came back, I had <laughs> six stacks of 65,000 comb blocks. These were all filled with chaos uh, comb blocks. I've increased the number of heated centrifuge I have from one to well, there's like 18 here, I think. Five and four and five and four, 18. 
They all have speed upgrades, and they all have four time torches around them. Some of these torches are doing quadruple duty, but they do speed up the four blocks around them. So that one there in the middle is doing all four of these centrifuges. And I just have some extras around the outside to give each one four torches. And they're going pretty quick. I can't quite tell how quick they're going because while this, you see the progress bar moving up, you see it's flicking back. It's actually doing multiple runs at once. So we're getting a lot of these shards and I'm only halfway through the backlog. You can see how fast it's going there. I can speed it up by using some of the time. These just fly, look at that. <laughs> and then you can see an actual big change in the speed and I can do more of them. But even though I did idle, I left it running for like two days, forgot about that it was still connected. So while I used a bunch of time, I got a lot back. So I was over, I was like 208 before I came in here and I was uh, trying to speed it up. So yeah, we've got plenty of shards and if I look this up, I actually had converted, oh, I had had it down to just a couple hundred of these tinies and I got up to 290. I've got so many more now. So we've got all the chaos shards we could want. Uh, more than I need. <laughs> so I can actually, let's see, it's these chaotic cores that I need for the star, right? Yes. And then some of the chaotic energy converter con controllers. And those are just regular crafting around the other items I can make. So yeah. So I'll tell it to make 20 of these. Oh, I, I used up too many of the tinies. Let's uh, stop the... Uh, I didn't teach it to downgrade, only upgrade. <laughs> All right, now we should be able to make 20. All right, that'll go. And then I'll make the other one, which is just crafting. And we've got two more things down. And I think this episode has gone on way too long. Uh, both for you at over an hour and me for almost a week. So <laughs> this is Nonsanity. Signing out. Take care. Oh, wait. Uh, I will be doing a Chaos Shard replacement thing next episode. So, And I will be alchemistry. So looking forward to that. This is Nonsanity signing out. Take care. Be good. And see you next time.